We got the signal. We're good. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Facebook Live and Instagram Live. The sisters are in, or the sisters are back. Uh, we were here last week. I warned you we were coming back. Uh, let's see. I'm Arnie Near, expert coach at Handel Group. This is my sister, Lauren Zender, co-founder and chairwoman of Handel Group. Uh, thank you for sending your questions in. And remember, if we get to one of yours, uh, you get $50 off of a private coaching session. So you'll get an email from us. So be on the lookout for that. And feel free to send us a live question. We dare you. Okay. I'll give you the topic. Ready, Lauren? Here's the topic. It's not Thanksgiving, really. Really. <laughs> I mean, I guess it all could be that same family gathering. Uh, topic is uh, difficult people. <laughs> Good with Thanksgiving. A side <laughs> okay. of difficult people. It was so stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> that cranberry juice. Yeah. Oh. All right. So, how do you deal with difficult people, Lauren? All right. All right. Okay. Every time I bring up a hard conversation with my partner, mm. I can see them shut down immediately. Mm. How do you get someone to listen and have a hard conversation with you? Okay. So first, you should always acknowledge that if you know someone doesn't want to have one, that you need them to plan a time like, oh, hey, I know these aren't your favorite. I really understand that. And I don't want to do them every day. And I want to have one hard conversation. I want to tell you the topic. And then I want us to plan a time to have the conversation. It's about mom. It's about work it's about the kids it's about your drinking right so then you right and I want you to be able to think about it and I'm not coming to attack you I really just want to be able to tell you what's going on for me and I want you to listen but I want you to pick a time when you're willing to do that and you're prepared to like sit and give me 45 minutes okay and I promise I won't go over 45 minutes and you know whenever I need to have one of these I'll organize it more like this Right, so you show up to the person like they deserve rights and time to pick and they know the topic. And if they wanna ask any other questions, they can, but you appreciate that they hate this <laughs> and you agree they hate this and you don't wanna overstep, but you need to have this conversation because you're married or they're your sister or you know whatever reason. Like we need to because it's really important to me that I really understand you and you understand me, and so I, I'm sorry to force this on you, but we do need to talk about this subject. You know, debt, destruction, anything you wanna talk about. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's key, the thing that you don't ambush them, right? Because most likely they feel ambushed and that's why they don't wanna have them. I mean, you know, they're hard conversations. No one's like, oh goody, let's talk about my drinking. But if you set it up, let them know it's not an ambush, and, you know, they're not even in trouble, trouble, right? Unless they're in trouble. And then you should let them know they're in a little trouble. But still, like what Lauren said, is you're setting up the context for I wouldn't have this conversation if I didn't love you, if I didn't care, if I wasn't worried about you, or whatever it is. So they really know it's coming from love. And please understand that the faces that they're making or why they, like, they, they have perfected the face to keep you away, yeah. right? My son has it down, right? Like the kids have it down. You've had your face down that like people know the face you make. Face. People have very good faces to deter you from having difficult conversations with them. So uh, get over their face, right? Cause you're interpreting their pain or they're gonna kill you or the eye they're giving you <laughs> and, and let them give you that eye. Like, don't go, why do you have to give me that? Like, you don't need to get hurt by their face. They're allowed to go through their process. It's true. Okay. It's true. Lindsay always comes at me with like, you're not in trouble. And it really helps a lot. <laughs> I can hear it then. All righty then. How do you deal with people that can take constructive criticism? Um, well, the first thing is you would ask the person it how they would like you to deliver it right so the more you can ask the other person like hey i have this thing that i need to talk to you about i don't know how to talk to you about it i never do it well it's about your mother 
It's yeah. about food. It's about drinking. It's about this subject. And I know you hate when I bring this up. How should I do it so that you can really hear my experience? I'm not coming after you, but I do want to negotiate about it. So see the last thing I just said, but really ask them, how do I do it so I don't offend you or get into a fight with you? And I really could just say my truth. Right, so ask them how. And go back to the original plan, which is set up a time and put it back into that and just add that feature. Like, what do you need me to do it in, right? And they really do know, well, if you only said it this way, many people are like, what they do is they kill the messenger in how the message was delivered. And so they never have to hear. It is you. Completely. Right, so before you know it, you're the problem on how you said it. Everyone's like, <laughs> yes, so I've had that experience target. with everyone. <laughs> Right, I always get that from her. <laughs> it is true. Completely. Right, like, so you have to put on your like little soft slippers, <laughs> right? Like, how do you want me to do this? I know you hate when I have to tell you something. It is about you and your kid. And I want to just voice it because it keeps coming up for me. What do you want me to do? And then they, they tell you how to do it right. And then follow their instructions and even be like slowly like, how was that? Did I do that right? Right, keep trying to please them as you're about to deck them. It's true. Yeah, it really works. It's it completely. You know, it helps to hear the good shit first. You know, if you're getting notes, I'm not a great note taker, even though I'm a writer and I really should get good at it. It's hard to hear it because I want to be done and I want it to be great only. And so you should only tell me the good stuff. Uh, but clearly I get notes often. So you could tell me the great stuff first. You could tell me you have great stuff and some notes. Look, if you just care about my feelings by trying to make sure I don't get killed by your notes, I'm already better. If you just come straight in with the bat as I view it, you're gonna be in trouble for that bat. And she will never hear that. I can't like, hear, uh -huh, like, can't, uh -huh, like three, uh -huh. I will be in three more conversations eating crow and apologizing for being her boss and trying to say something straight and not really having time to really manage this, but she doesn't care because she's pleading sister and I better do this right. I have feelings. So she feelings. <laughs> right, and so be prepared for who you're talking to and take care of them. Yes. Yes. And then give them notes. They, they deserve them, we deserve them, I deserve them. Yes. All right, cool. Uh, my son moved back home after college and is bumming around the house. Really? How do I get him to get a job? <laughs> Every time I bring up his future, it turns into a fight. You see how p gaslighting, right? Like this is like you bring up something someone isn't dealing with and they attack, right? So when a person gets extra defensive, pretty much you should take the note, it's extra true, right? And then they can't take it from you. Okay, so um, again, you're going to set up a meeting. Okay, Sunday, you and I are sitting, like, please can we set up a time on Sunday where we're going to have a really straight conversation about my expectations if you're living here. Which dangles like, you can leave if you don't want to live here. But um, parent, you really do have the right to run rules in your house. Um, and if he can, you know, make that face scream at you and you'll leave the room and buy him two weeks, he will keep buying two weeks. And you go, listen, I don't, you know, I don't want to have to do this, but I need to because I'm getting very uncomfortable in my own home. And so I won't have that anymore. So Sunday, come prepared. We're going to talk about all the actions you're going to promise to take in order to stay here and be productive here. Get them to do housework. And what you're going to do daily to really get a job, right? And this is non-optional. The meeting is an optional. If you're living here, these are the rules. So I would set down the law. And the truth is you should have set that law before he moved back in. So be, did not be, you know, so you blew that. And so for anyone who's listening and your kid's gonna move back in, you would set up the rules no different than you did when they were in high school. True. Uh, we also, a lot of, if you're lucky enough or can afford it, you know, getting your son, daughter, whomever, a coach that isn't you to get them a job is genius, right? Because, you know, they don't listen to you the same way. They listen to a coach that they care about. And, you know, they care about you, but, you know. And then the odds are they don't know how to write a resume. Like, it could very be, it could be 
tactical. Like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I should do next. I did that. It didn't work. Right? And so they don't really understand all the steps to be taking and what a good day would be if they did these five steps. Right? So I, and then you help, and then you can even say in that meeting, like, listen, I'm also going to help you figure out exactly what you need to do and how to get it for you so you're not scared to death to go looking for a job. Right? They're probably just don't even know how to do it. It's really true. Yeah. And then from wherever the college they went to, there's a career center. There's like a lot of actions they could be taking. And we do have InterU, our online coaching course, we have InterU Career that um, really will help them write a dream and get into the right actions and have a promise tracker and have a buddy that's not their mom and uh, get really proud of themselves for being in the right actions. And they'll be a much better um, visitor at your house if yeah. uh, they're in a lot of actions and are proud of themselves. Yeah. Cool. All righty. My in-laws, I guess they're tough, love to give me parenting advice and it annoys me so, all caps, much. Mm. They do not know what our lives are like day to day. How do I get them to stop? Right. Good question. So you need a dream with your in-laws. Right? I want to have a great relationship, I want us to be connected, I want us to hang out, I want us to play, I want to hear what they have to say. Like, So there, there needs to be a much bigger point to your relationship with them. So then when you have grievances, it's not just you try to fix me and that's our whole relationship, so stay the hell away. Right. So right now, they're doing what they can to try and stuff in their advice and they don't know your whole life and they don't know what's going on. So really you owe them a, you know, a difficult conversation. So I really want to have a, a conversation with you. You know, let's go out for breakfast, you know, come over and I want to review my experience. Um, and the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to have a great relationship. I want to feel, make, let you feel like you can contribute, but I think you should know how it feels to me and how it's been for the past few years, and I wanna resolve all that and let that all go so that we can both have a much better, healthier relationship. And I'm sure you have grievances about me on how I react to stuff like that, so let's just like clear the air and hear each other, and you know, I have a whole script on how to do it, I'll read you all the instructions, and we'll like really do a good job of it, and really um, all in order to have a much better relationship where we both feel understood. And I promise my only intention about this is that we do great together and you feel good and I feel good. So why don't you come over Sunday at three and then I'll make dinner and like, and like, we'll just do it for about an hour and then we'll hang out and play. Right? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, key, the first thing that Lauren said was you need to have a dream about your relationship with your in-laws. So that first step is the first module or session of inner you where we get happy writing dreams in 12 different areas of your life one of them is family and sometimes we have people you know i'm happy to break it up to you and your son you and your in-laws everybody that matters to you right um there's work to be you have a how it should be versus how it actually is right now and the key of a lot of lauren's work is uh getting your fingerprints on the current crime scene Right, as opposed to my in-laws are a pain in my ass and they annoy, they're so annoying. Assume that you're annoyable, right? And it's just an easier approach to having a great relationship. And if you're watching us, you like this stuff, so get working on you first, right, to go create. Because if they've been annoying you for that long, there's been a long time you haven't been saying shit to them and letting them step in shit with you. So you get to first have a dream and then start to see where you could apologize for letting them constantly give you advice when you're not asking for it, right? But the more they do it, the more you let them, the more they annoy you. So there's a lot of you in there that you've got to deal with, I think, first, right? So I would get your dream. I find your own fingerprints of where you just watch them drown mm -hmm. and then go play with them and have a list. And, and it mostly will start with an apology for not listening to them nicely. Cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. There you go. 
My boss constantly interrupts and talks over me in meetings. Me too. Oops. <laughs> I feel I don't know who wrote this. I sound like our own. <laughs> I feel like it's it, me. I, I feel it. like it is hindering my growth at the company. What do I do? <laughs> Okay, so I'll tell you <laughs> how my husband explains it in a way that doesn't offend me because we're now officially talking about my ability to interrupt and not shut up. Who, me? Oh, no. No. Yes. Okay. So please understand that there are very different types of communication styles, right? There are the banter, like, and then my husband likens them to um, guns. Nothing. Nothing supporting guns, but, but he calls me a machine gun, <laughs> right? And he is a sniper. He waits for a pause. <laughs> he, he wants to be heard. He wants everybody to want to know what he has to say. And then he lets it out, <laughs> right? And the poor man never gets to speak when he's with me. He's a hunter. He's like quiet <laughs> in the woods for days. <laughs> he, really, he really is, right? And so I always have to basically shut up long enough for him to pause so he can get his one sentence or three sentences out. And his pentameter, like his beat, boom, boom, is, and I'm like, right? And so, be, so what you do is one, you stop getting offended, you have very different styles. And you let your boss know that you get very flustered, intimidated. Don't speak up because of their style. Like, hey, I want you to know you, you know, banter and you probably, like they probably had siblings, many of them. And then they just learned to yak, 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 yak. He may be a New York Jew <laughs> who thinks, wants to be in every sentence with you not trying to get rid of you, but wants you to play and thinks all conversations should be back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, you do not. Likely he or she doesn't know that because you're sitting there fuming, waiting for the pause to say your sentence and the pause gets interrupted. Like, it's just annoying. So there isn't a question whether likely your boss has heard this before, um, but how to say it is framing it. Like, so I need to have a difficult conversation with you. We have, like, there's a module. We do a lot of work on how to craft a difficult conversation and make you script it so that you're not flustered or messed up while you're sharing it. But you need to let them know that you really like to finish a whole thought and that you don't feel like you get to finish a whole thought because he has a different kind of, or she has a different kind of, you know, style for talking and you wanted to let them know that you really do need like a chance to finish your sentence. And really what the other person needs you to do is like you pretty much you should have to like, I'll raise my hand if you're interrupting me. Like I know you're going to, but I would love you to wait till I finish and then really remember that. And so we could get better at a give and take in a dialogue. And because you're my boss, I'm so scared to tell you that I don't know how to talk with you freely. And I would love to, and it would mean a lot for me in my career because I know I'm not getting to say as much as I want to say, and it would really mean a lot to me if you helped me pause, right? And, and really get my words out, okay? You have to train everyone around you that's a machine gun. <laughs> Forgive them. And then really train them to know you are the sniper type and you need space and time to talk. And you're gonna owe, you know, I hope you don't live in New York because it's very difficult. <laughs> but um, I'm right. joking, right? See, see, she just did it. <laughs> and we love it, <laughs> right, it's fun. Um, and so, and then the other thing I would tell you to do, which you're not gonna love, but will probably be very good for you, is I would take an improv class. Um, there's a way you're, not flowing or even being able to go, hey, wait, let me finish my thought, right? So you're gonna need to have a more give and take for different styles of communication, especially if you want to get ahead in your business. You can't just go, everybody shut up and let me talk. It will never work because there's so many different styles of people and assume 
that they will want you to say everything and that they're happy to be trained, right? They're extroverts, okay? And you need a little class in being more of an extrovert. And so the improv, um, which I made Marnie do. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> right. Um, I love her. Before you know it, you're, you're on the floor barking like a dog and, you know, acting like you need a, a meal. Like, there's a way you need to get out of your head that you're not. And the improv is a very fun but healthy way to um, get out of your head. Because also what's happening is you're in your head and then you're watching them and then you're watching them interrupt you. And then there's a part of you that's just going to be angry always or offended always. And that's not what's going on here. This is really just different styles. Yeah. Or, you, you know, you might even, we teach that your thoughts create your reality or your theories create your reality. So also if you have a thought or theory that your boss always interrupts and talks over you and you're less important, guess what happens often? And guess what the win is? The win is they actually talked over you. Right, and then you gossip about it and then there's like everyone knows that that's, a, right? So then it becomes a thing rather than one of the things uh, you're doing for leadership. Like as a leader, you would tell what you needed. You would share, help me out, right? Not as an arrogant, you're doing something wrong, you should be more like me, or I should be more like you. That's not what we're saying. We're just understand each other and step up and tell the truth. Yeah, and then Beth, so I have a, we have another sister, an older sister, who used to interrupt Laura, remember? She had a problem with, because she, so people even interrupt she was. She didn't interrupt me. She liked to finish my sentences. <laughs> it's very different. She literally, because she knows what I'm going to say, because we've already talked about it, or she heard it, and she literally would, like, run over, especially for the punchline. The chick loved my fucking punchlines. And she's my big sister, so she, like, feels entitled to my punchlines. And so I was like, Beth, you can't take the punchline, and you can't run away with my stories. I started the story. And she agreed, and then she owes me 20 bucks if she runs away with my story, right? And that's funny, fun, and I get the story back, and I get 20 bucks. It's true. It's, so it's true. We all, I we, finished punchline today, and then she, my husband does it to me, and it drives me apeshit. He likes to take the end of because I go a little long in my story. <laughs> well, so he didn't show up. I got it. It's so right. I hate Excellent. It. All right, we have one more question. One more. One more. Let's see. Uh oh, which one? I, don't know. I guess we should do this one. How do I not let the negative, mean, or grouchy people in my life affect my mood? I feel like I take on the emotions of others quickly, and my day can sour if my friend, partner, or coworker is in a bad mood. Okay. Last one. Okay. So you've trained everybody, right? Anyone who's complaining to you, comes to you, loves to tell you all the problems, loves to get your empathy and, and share everything with you. You have to go, well, I trained them in that. They've been doing that for years now, right? So first admit that you've been listening for a long time and haven't really figured out how to stop them and you haven't even tried. Okay, now they're trained and they think that if you're listening to their shit or they're suffering, you love them. So one, I want you to know anyone who's telling you all that stuff actually thinks you listening is love, okay? And so no wonder you don't wanna tell them to shut up or stop complaining because that's mean, right? And you don't wanna be mean, you're the nice one who listens to all the shit, but you would nice. Snice is our word for snaky nice or shitty nice or whatever you want to S that one. And what it is, is you, you smile, but you're a snake in your head, right? Right. Okay. So you actually owe a confession, right? Susie, I have to tell you something and I'm, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. What? I have been listening to you talk about that guy. I have been listening to you complain about her. I have been listening to that. And here's my truth. I'm okay with listening, really. But I'm not okay with you never doing anything about it. Right? So it feels useless for me to listen if you don't fix it. So if you think about it, the issue is not the complaint. It's that they keep complaining. 
and that it's not like, tell me your problem and we'll come up with a solution together. Are you into that? Okay, so if you really are into, if you complain, let's come up with a solution and then you have to take that action, then you'll be happy. That would be my advice. Now, if you're like, I don't even give them advice. I don't even want a solution. I want them to shut up, okay? That's different. That's entirely different. So figure out which category you're in. We'll assume the nice person's in the, as long as they solve it, I'll be happier because that is something you can say to them, okay? And you're apologizing for never saying it or making it clear or that's what you need so you feel productive and valued for your time that you're listening to the upset. Cool. If it's the other one, which is tell them to stop talking to me. <laughs> I don't have any confusion there. I'm not available. Okay. Um, that one's harder. Okay. And the reason that's harder is you really would like to diss this person. You would really like them to figure out to leave you alone. And the odds that you want to go, we're not really close enough for you to be telling me this shit anymore. And I don't really care. That would be the truth, right? Like, leave me alone. Don't talk to me about this. <laughs> right? Like, why are you still using me? Susie down this, like, she'll listen. Right. 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 Yeah, you're not doing that version. I don't recommend that version. <laughs> Here's the version I recommend. It's more like my, how I teach you to blow off someone dating wise. Right? <laughs> right? Like, hello. Right? When you're done. Right? Um, you're like, oh, I got to go. I got, like, you literally get back to work get off the phone, call them, like, don't have time and really mean it, right? Like really have what you're doing, really have what you're committed to, really get away from them much sooner. Go to the bathroom. You always have to pee. There is never a time you can't empty your bladder, okay? So I really, I'm not telling you to lie. I'm telling you to put them in the category they're in for you. So there are your A friends, your B friends and your C friends. And C friends are people that you know, but you don't deeply connect with and they're you're friendly and kind and you can work together. So what you're telling me is you have someone who's in an A or a B category and you really want them in C. Like, see ya, right? And so what you have to do is you have to start acting like a C to them and they will act like a C back to you and it'll take about a week. You blow them off a little two or three times and they will stop using you that way. Want a bet? Try it. Nice. Okay. Is that yeah. it? I think that's good. I think the only thing I'd add to it is if you used your bad mood, like they suck you dry and they get you sour because they're being sour as a good indicator for you being two-faced with them, Right, like they're like, oh, my, like just got so tired from being with them. It's because you didn't fucking tell the truth. Like, I, I, when I realized that not being me is what was so exhausting, <laughs> right? I used to just walk around like, it's so hard being me, Lauren. And then I was like, oh my God, it's just so hard being me because I'm not me more often than I am. Faux Marnie. So then if you really got, <laughs> oh, right, that's, that's, you know, we're calling you two-faced with them. Get honest with them or get rid of them like, as nice as you can bring them to a seat. That's it. We're going to end on that Ah, wait, but you know, we did a lot of talking about inner you, or at least we trickled it through so that you would know uh, about our course that rocks, that really takes you from dreaming to lineage and traits to how to have a hard conversation, which there isn't one of us that doesn't need the know-how, and uh, to laundry lists, which a bunch of you have on these people. There isn't anything we don't cover to how to have your son have a dream and have a career uh, is in inner you life, inner you career, uh, and we're offering it for a discount. We're doing our Crazy Eddie moment. Oh, Crazy Eddie. <laughs> uh, you guys, we were like products of the 70s, right? So there was like this crazy car salesman. I hate crazy sales. Like I always, if you really actually notice our high end, like our coaching, you never feel oversold. It's like if you want it, We'll tell you come, everything, come, come call us, <laughs> right? But because the interview is such a good deal, right? And that, and we also do sales, we're allowed to be crazy Eddie, right? Do it, and in 24 hours, if you use this code, you can have it half price, or else it'll go back to normal. Yeah, so use the 
Use the coupon, sisters are in 325 and get interview for $325. You know, $650, I swear, is a bargain for how much you're going to get. So $325 is insane, yes. truly. So go check it out. And if you sign up uh, quickly, you'll get into Lori Gerber's masterclass that starts January 23rd. And we're trying something new. It's a boot camp where she's going to walk you through a week, one class a week for six weeks. So she's going to make sure uh, that you go through interview and she's got you. Yeah. And then for those of you who love Handel but don't have it, I have I honestly have my clients buy it so that they can learn. It's like tw each module is like 25 minutes and it's like a great podcast, okay? And so you can just listen to it and learn the method and it really will go in in a very different way. I know this for a fact. It's true. All right, sisters are in three, two, five until the next one. Thank you.